Hey there everyone, my name is Rabbit. I'm enjoying it more than the Bioshock Remaster anyway, and welcome to episode number 64 of our 100% item guide and walkthrough for Legend of Lagaya. In our previous episode, we spent the entirety of it feeding Soru Bread to Treasure Chest so that we could come here and turn on a device that opens the entryway to Warrior Square where we need to put the Genesis Tree seedling in order to drive away the mist from Seoul. Kind of complicated and convoluted, but whatever, it's done. So let's run all the way down. Since what was previously blocking the path, which was a weird gargoyle-like statue or stone figure, was moved away. And now we can truly get into the depths. So first things first, let's run up here to the upper left-hand corner for a shitty speed elixir, which... It's fine, fine, fine. You guys know, selling fodder for me at this point in time. But that's okay. The more money we get is always great, and it's nice we've got new opponents and shit. I don't think that I healed myself, or maybe I did. I mean, not that it matters. When I say, oh shit, it's more just because, ah, uh, miss opportunity. But it's fine. Oh god, I'm going to have to ask you to not do this, Medusa. Why? Ha ha ha. Nothing happened. You suck. I'm good. Suck my dick. Alright, so coming into this area, I would say as long as your levels are around 25-ish, you're not going to have too much trouble. I think the enemies here in the lower level of Seoul, and by lower level, I guess, really, I should say the basement portion of Seoul, they're more difficult than, I think, just the generic lower level mist, Seru, and mist creatures that you encountered. So just make sure your levels are comparable. It's been a while since I was really unprepared because I played the game so many times, but I do remember this area giving me some trouble when I was a kid and making my way through. You know, of course, after it took me a million years to figure out what to do with the treasure chests and the solar ring. But once I got past that mystery, I recall having a bit of trouble. But you know, what's nice is you have the opportunity for grinding and getting the levels that you need because you can heal for free on the very top level, where honestly you make enough money to justify just paying to sleep at the inn, so... You really are in a good position to do some grinding if you really need to. But anyway, I will not lecture you. You guys know how to manage your resources. Anyway, let's take a minute to investigate a bunch of the different bookcases just because I like to do it. So on the bookshelf are two volumes of Kuda's Soul Mythology. All right, very interesting. I don't... Oh, we can. So Soul Mythology is still here. On the bookshelf are eight volumes of Innie's Legends of Soul. Oh, okay. So we still got that here. I guess the back and front don't change. But if you come right here, on the bookshelf are all ten volumes of Keem's History of Soul. So once you see that, make sure you check a second time. And this is so often missed. So once you investigate it the second time, as you saw, the first text was the same, but then it's immediately followed by new text that says, amid the history of soul books is a vulgar, garishly covered book. So Vaughn now has Mary's diary. Hmm, a vulgar book. I wonder why they thought to throw in that description. Have we spoken to someone who said something about being embarrassed about a book? Actually, yes, we have. But if you don't remember... It'll all come back together and make sense shortly. Anyway, we're pretty much done with the bookshelves, but I'll just inspect the rest of them so you can see what else remains. So five volumes of Naba's Theory of War, three volumes of Tornay's Ligayan Animal Life, and this one on the bookshelf are all 25 volumes of Nako's The Prince. Now that actually sounds like something I would like to read, but we cannot, unfortunately. Oh god, a mage. What are you doing down here? And how long have you been trapped? When I was little, I used to always wonder, in areas of dungeons like this where, you know, they've been sealed away with no access to humans or the outside world, 
What do these monsters and or regular Seru, what do they eat? I mean, do they eat each other? How are they procreating? What, what, is, what is the answer to these questions? I don't know. But I used to think about things like that, as weird as that sounds, and I would always just wonder, like, how are these monsters all here? Wouldn't they eventually all die, or kill each other, or eat each other? I don't know, I guess it's fine. But they are not too tough for us, and oh, I stole a magic leaf? What? Holler! That is pretty cool. Well, I would say that's a good conclusion to dealing with the mage. Let's see if we can get lucky. I'm going to have Vaughn deal the final blow to the war half here. Fingers, toes, legs, whatever you want to have crossed, cross them now. Let's see what we get. Assuming we get anything out of this. Ah, nothing. Oh, well, that's fine. A magic leaf is a wonderful drop, so we cannot be upset about that. Although I am a hoarder and I haven't, honestly, been utilizing my items as much as I should slash could. But, you know, that's fine. And I don't even know who, whose turn it is to use Spoon next. So we'll just start with you. Whoop-dee-doo. Finally, a Spoon is at level two. That's great. Let's keep on rolling, friends. And once we go through these two sections, make sure you do not miss this wonder amulet hidden up here in the upper left-hand corner behind the boxes and barrels. And let me see. I don't know. Have we had this forest amulet? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we have not had a wonder amulet before. So just to show you, it nullifies all abnormal statuses. So that's pretty cool. It's not something that I'm going to make use of right now. But if you wanted to, you can. It's just sort of up to you if you want to use it or not. But like I said, it's not for me. So when you run in here, make sure you make a quick dart over to the right-hand side and open up the chest for a golden book. And again, Let's arrange and see if we can find it. Hey, that didn't take me too long. So it gives you gold boost, which increases gold obtained after battle by 25%. Now this is wonderful if you haven't sort of been utilizing some of the methods that I've been doing. Well, I shouldn't say some of the methods. Really, it's been one method that we've quickly examined. And that's namely utilizing the muscle dome and the slot machines to get enough Soru bread to sell and basically get a fuck ton of cash if you are not about that life and you don't have the patience to do the slots or you've grown tired and weary of doing baka fighter to get the coins you need to get the sword bread to sell this is another way that you can kind of increase how much gold that you're getting i don't know it's just something to keep in mind because you will need money in the game and this is another way to at least minimize the impact of this game's i don't want to say it's a horrible finance situation but it is painful to get money in this game you just oh my god are always struggling or i used to always struggle and hey look at this friends is that a somewhat familiar face it is it is tomorrow if you guys do recall and it wasn't that long ago in retire when we were infiltrating the castle to stop noah's potential sacrifice to Juggernaut, we did come across two Camaros, and I said you could capture them then. It was sort of along the same vein as with the Vigoros, where it's nice if you get them early. I love Camaros spell effect, but I didn't capture them, and I didn't feel like reloading to do it, and looky here, Camaro is back. So I'm going to actually kill Medusa first so she doesn't fuck up my team. Yeah, good job, Kamaro. Noah is sort of stoned right now. <laughs> I should say she's petrified, but whatevs. Saying she's stoned, I like the sound of that a little better. So naturally, I will be dicking around here to capture Kamaros. Not yet, probably at the end of this video if everyone doesn't have one. I'll make sure we all get the ivory books and yada yada blah blah. All right, so Medusa's out of commission, so we don't have to at least worry about her completely petrifying my entire team. 
I know, Noah, this is kind of inf- unfortunate. And I don't recall if someone is petrified if they get XP or not for the battle. I don't know if the game treats it the same as death. It may or may not, I'm not too sure, but I'm just going to auto Kamaro. I'm not too concerned with capturing him right now, or her, you know, whatever pronoun it chooses to identify itself as and by. All right, Gala, it's all you. Let's see, will we be lucky? Uh, no. <laughs> that was probably overkill anyway, but it's fine. Yeah, it looks like Noah did not get XP for that. So, <laughs> that sucks a little bit. But the effect should be gone. I think she's okay now. Well, I'm not too worried about it. So, let's run up here. And if you want to, you can go ahead and save. I'm not going to yet. Let us read the Genesis Tree Monument which says, the construction of Seoul began in the age of the legendary emperor Atora I. It is said that Atora I chose this site because of the Genesis tree. Since mythical times, the Genesis tree has been considered the guardian tree of Seoul. For some unknown reason, the Genesis tree withered in the age of the holy emperor Atora IV. Atora IV moved the Genesis tree to the Byron Temple in keeping with the prophecy of Hari. This monument is dedicated to the memory of the Genesis tree. Well, that's not entirely necessary, you guys. It's kind of okay. But anyway, let's run over here. And I don't think anything's in this corner. No, it's not. So let's head on downstairs. The air is so cold. I'm chilled to the bone. This place is so weird. The air is stale from being sealed in here for so long. Hey, what's that? There, in the middle, those strange rocks. That must be the warrior's square that Dr. Usha was talking about. The square must be behind those stones. Oh, I want to see the square. I want to go through the stones. All right, so yes, we do have a series of puzzles here, which can be a bit of a pain in the ass, so let's just go through it step by step and see if we can knock it all out before the end of this episode. So we're going to start out by triggering the switch here in front of us, and it drops that layer, woohoo. And if we run around this way, we've got a purple switch that we can go ahead and trigger. And we should be able to run down and let me see here. After the purple switch, I think we should pass this one and come over here to the blue switch. I think this is the right way to do it. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, you know what? Let's just run back here through the blue gate. I probably should have made my way through all of this and... Uh, practice it at least once but you know whatever we'll figure it out as we go okay so once we've gone through this hmm I think we can go up here and then hit this one hmm I think oh god guys this may or may not work out let's see how it goes then we can run through this Go back down this way, and let's actually run up. Okay, if I can get on the, f oh, well, I can't get on it there. Derp. Let's run up this way then. There are only so many options, right? So one way or the other, we will get this figured out. I've never been one who's naturally great at puzzles, but you make do, you make do. I think it's Noah's turn to dish out the heels. So once we are done with that, hmm, I think we are okay. Let's trigger this bad boy. Bazam. So let's head around this way. Trigger that bad boy. And I think, okay, now that we're down here, 
Do we want to run a run? Oh my god. Whatever. There are no double takes around here, fam. You guys already know how it goes with me. I think it's a part of the rabbit charm, right? <laughs> Hey, at least you know there's no, like, testing the waters and pre-recording or anything or pre-playing areas and then recording. It's just sort of what it is. But anyway, in good news, as you can see, Vaughn managed to capture a Camaro. So I'll let us get into one more fight. I actually think triggering that last blue switch is all that's needed to allow us to advance to the very bottom and progress the story. Since we had dropped the final barrier that was encapsulating the warrior square itself. But anyway, before we go in and deal with that, I will get into a fight and let you see Kamaro. He casts Canine Fangs, which I've already mentioned to you guys is one of my absolute favorite spells in the game. At least regarding the regular Seru. All of the like special like Rasaru that you get from the amulets, I think those are obviously going to look better in terms of their animations, but for the ordinary Seru that you absorb into your Rasaru, Kamaro is definitely on top. It's a very eerie and I'll just, I'll just let you see. But anyway, there's Kamaro. We should have gotten the last of them yet because if we wanted to, we could finally descend and trigger the next scene of events, but we're not going to do that. Instead, I will run around here. We'll get into one more fight. I love it when we end up accidentally capturing the Seru without the ivory books and without actually trying. Because what I'm going to do off camera from you, I'm going to start off and let you cast Kamaro on the war half, and then our other two will spirit and we'll see if one of them can capture Kamaro because that is my number one priority. I will make sure everyone has a Kamaro and that naturally everything is alphabetized for everyone with their magic menus. Just check this out. I will hold off on what I'm saying. Kamaru is so scary. Or it's just a Kamaro. I don't know why I always call him Kamaru. Kamaro. It's like a weird rabbit gerbil thing. But isn't that so creepy? Very eerie and unnerving spell effect. He does a fuck ton of damage too. Rest in peace, monster. Okay, Vaughn, you chill. The rest of you. Let's see if one of you can capture this thing. And then once we're done here, we will wrap it up. And like I was telling you guys, any luck for Noah? No, of course not. I will make sure everyone has a Kamaro in tow. I will also make sure everything's alphabetized. And I will probably just run up to the inn and sleep so that we have almost all of our mana and all of that fun jazz when it is time for us to head on down to the center of Warrior Square and get everything going. So thank you very much for watching, my friends. I will bring you back very shortly and we will be ready to keep the ball rolling. So as always, I'm your host, Rabbit. This is my 100% item guide and walkthrough for Legend of Lagaya, and I'll see you soon.